Hello. Hi, I'm, I'm over here. Hi, everybody. Hello, Bosmir. Come and join me. Come down this end of the church. Because as you can see, I'm in St. Faith's today. Um, you probably noticed that it looks a bit different. All the pews have been taken out. And that is, of course, because of this COVID pandemic, which is why I can't be with you in school at the moment as well. Um, and so I thought I'd send you this video for an assembly this week to, to talk about Holy Week. Holy Week is one of the most important weeks, if not the most important week, in the life of Christians. It's when we remember Jesus' last week on earth before he died and then rose again from the dead. And, and I thought I'd just walk you through it in the church so you can see some of the ways in which we will remember Holy Week together. And it all starts with some palms. Uh, actually, no, not, not the palms of my hands at this stage, but some different kinds of palms. Some palm trees and palm leaves. Because what happened was a week before he died and then rose from the dead, Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Not a great big war horse. Jesus didn't want people to think that he was coming to use violence to establish God's kingdom of love. So he rode instead on a little donkey. In fact, it was a baby donkey. And, but people recognized him. They recognized that he was the king of kings, that he was the Messiah, the one who was come to save them from all the stupid things that human beings do to each other. And so they cut down palm branches from the trees and they started to wave them in the air and shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us, save us. Hosanna, they cried, Hosanna in the highest heaven, save us from heaven, dear Lord. And as well as waving the palms, they started to scatter them on the ground so that as he walked along on his donkey, he was walking over palm leaves that were being cast down. They also took off their cloaks and laid them on the ground as well to provide a sort of carpet for him to walk on. It was a wonderful day. Everybody was so happy. They were so excited. They thought that Jesus was coming to save them. But a number of them thought that he was coming to save them, not from themselves, not from all the bad things that human beings do, but rather that he was coming to save them from the Romans. At the time, the Roman army were occupying Jerusalem and all the land around it and the Jewish people felt particularly oppressed and they thought Jesus was coming to save them but when as the week rolled on they found that that wasn't Jesus's agenda that Jesus wanted to save all humanity from the bad things that humanity does to one another they got angry with him they got so angry that they started to accuse him of false lies. They accused him of saying bad things about God, of what's called blasphemy. And eventually, they hung him on a cross to die because he didn't live up to their expectations. They wanted a man of violence and Jesus gave them a man of peace and love. And they couldn't deal with that, so they got rid of him. And on Friday, here in church, we, at two o'clock in the afternoon, leading up until three o'clock, which is the moment that Jesus died on that first Good Friday, we will be here remembering Jesus' awful death at the hands of those wicked people who wanted him to be their warrior king. We also remember... Jesus' death using these palm crosses, which, as it were, they combine Palm Sunday with the cross itself. And you can pick these up from the church. If you're around on Friday, if you're in town on Friday morning, come into the church and pick up a palm cross. Um, you might want to use it to just remember what happened to Jesus 
on that Good Friday. Jesus had a terrible time on the cross. It was a miserable place to be. And ultimately, he died for the sins of humanity. All the bad things that humanity did to him were taken by him onto the cross and, as it were, died with him. And at the end of Good Friday, he was taken by his friends, his body, after he had died, was taken by his friends and placed in a tomb that looked not unlike this tomb that we have here. They were very sad. They thought that was the end of God's kingdom of love. They thought that all the joy of Palm Sunday had been lost, lost forever, because Jesus, the, the man who loved them so much, was now dead and gone. And so they placed his body in the tomb quickly because the sun was going down and it was a, a special day for Jewish people when you couldn't work after the sun had gone down. So they couldn't do anything to his body. They just placed it in the tomb and rolled the stone in front of the tomb. It was a big, heavy stone. It took a lot of men to roll it across and so they sealed up his body. They went away crying. They went away so sad because they hadn't even been able to prepare his body properly for burial. They just had to leave him in the tomb. But three days later, early on Sunday morning, some women, some of Jesus' female disciples, came to the tomb in order to do the proper things to his body, to, to anoint it with the proper uh, herbs and spices and to uh, prepare his body properly for death. But when they got here to the tomb, they found, to their utter astonishment, that the stone had been rolled away. And instead there was an angel sitting on the top of the tomb and saying, where or why are you looking for Jesus among the dead? He's not dead. He is alive. Well, this was incredible. They couldn't believe it. But over the subsequent days, Jesus met with his disciples again in many different places, all around Jerusalem and, and the surrounding lands, so that after just a few days, they all knew deep within their hearts the truth that Jesus had somehow beaten death. And uh, I've been wearing this red chasuble throughout talking to you because red is a sign of royalty. And so it's why we wear it on Palm Sunday. It's also a sign of blood, which is why we wear it on Good Friday. But when it comes to Easter, we change. We no longer wear red in the church. Instead, we wear white and gold. And I've got here a rather marvelous piece of clothing known as a cope, uh, which is all gold and shimmery. It's a really nice bit of bling. Um, so let me put on my cope so you can see what that looks like. We wear all these funny clothes in the church just because they remind us of different things. And frankly, they're fun. It's fun to dress up, isn't it? Have you ever dressed up? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, but by dressing up, you send a different signal, don't you? And the signal of this gold, well, together with my white cassock here, is good news. It's the good news that whatever the world throws at Jesus on the cross, he will rise up from the dead. And that's good news for us. For Christians believe that even when things are bad, even like now during this pandemic, when things have been really difficult for so many people, God is always at work. God is always looking to rise up from the dead, always looking to bring goodness even out of the worst of circumstances. So that's what we'll be celebrating on Easter. We'll celebrate it with Easter eggs because eggs are a sign of new life. And I hope you'll all be having lots of Easter eggs when you eat your Easter egg, think of the new life of Jesus bursting forth from this tomb. 
perhaps we can just spend a moment to pray together. Um, please just close your eyes wherever you are and we'll just say a few words of prayer. Or if you prefer, just think back over what I've been talking about and see whether there's anything true in it for you. But I'll say a prayer and I invite you to pray silently in your minds with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. We thank you for the way he rode into Jerusalem, declaring his kingdom of love on the back of a donkey. We thank you that he was prepared, he was so committed to his life of love that he was prepared to even die for it. And we thank you that he rose again from the tomb to show us that even the worst of times and the worst of circumstances can be transformed by you. Lord, as we approach this Easter day and as we eat our Easter eggs, those signs of new life, help us to look for your life and your love and your brightness in our worlds. For we ask it in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope to see you all soon, either around the town. Do come in the church on Friday, because it'll be a, a school holiday on Good Friday. Um, we'll be here in the morning, where you can come and see the tomb yourself, if you wish, and collect a palm cross. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, by all means, join us on Sunday, if you'd like to, for songs of celebration here in the church. But in any case, I hope to see you all very soon. Goodbye. God bless you. Take care.